Hi, this is Brian Kim. I want to share with you case number 73 in the best way to do cataract surgery series. This is somewhat of a soft lens. I want to be placing a toric IOL positioning the lens at 81 degrees. So you can see I've already pre-marked the patient while the patient was upright in the pre-op holding area. It's important to dry the surface of the eye when you do the marks so you get a nice clean mark on the conjunctiva and cornea. I use a cotton tip to steady the eye and then use a corneal marker, which will help me to center and size my erexis. I make my paracentesis incisions, first on the right side and then the left side, making sure I stay flat to the iris plane so I can get a nice corneal shelf, which will allow me to achieve a self-sealing incision. I'm injecting some intracameral lidocaine and then some dispersive viscoelastic to fill the anterior chamber. And I use a cannula to hold and steady the eye as I do the triplanar corneal incision. I make a vertical groove, place the blade into the deep part of the groove, tunnel into the cornea. And then when I've created enough of a corneal tunnel, I turn the eye towards me using the cannula and then enter. And so I'm using the cannula to provide me that extra control to make my incision. I'm injecting some more viscoelastic to fill the anterior chamber and to flatten the anterior capsule. I go in with the rexus forceps sideways and then begin the puncture style technique. I puncture the central capsule. Actually, this patient has somewhat of an elastic capsule, and so that didn't work. You know, young patients tend to have elastic capsules. And so this patient's a little bit older. So whenever I have a capsule that I can't puncture very easily, I am worried about zonulopathy. So I'm switching to a cystotome technique. I'm gonna puncture the center and then cut a little bit to the left and to create a flap on the right side. And then we'll switch to the rexus forceps now. Before doing so, I'm gonna inject some more viscoelastic to flatten the anterior capsule, because with all that manipulation, it causes more viscoelastic to come out. And so as I do the rexus, there's gonna be a higher tendency for the rexus to run out. So I go ahead and start the rexus going around circumferentially using the corneal marker, which will help me to center and size the rexus. You can see the outline of my mark there. I'm just staying just within the corneal mark. Go ahead and finish off the rexus and burp some viscoelastic out of the eye. And this will be the capsular fornix hydrodissection technique. I place a cannula underneath the rexus edge contraincisionally pointing the tip down, get a nice fluid wave, actually causing the lens to come up, decompress on the left side, point the tip down on the right side, and the lens begins to spin. There you go, I kind of loosened it up more on the left side and now it spins a little bit easier. Irrigate the surface of the cornea, adjusting my sleeve, Lifting the incision with the chopper, going in with irrigation off to minimize decimase trauma. Removing the surface epinuclear material. Placing the chopper underneath the rexus edge out to the equator, pointing the phaco tip vertically subincisionally, bringing the instruments together and crushing and bisecting the lens. That's double chop. Placing the chopper around the right hemineucleus, pulling it centrally toward the phaco tip. That is the cross chop, dividing the right hemineucleus using a little bit of vacuum to lift that first quadrant up out of the bag and getting around it with the chopper and crushing it, dividing it into smaller pieces, and then emulsifying the lens pieces. Placing the chopper around the second quadrant, pulling it up out of the bag, and then crushing it between the chopper and a finger tip, and then emulsifying the lens pieces and removing the lens pieces. very gently rotating the second hemineucleus in front of me, placing the chopper around the lens piece, 
pulling it centrally towards the fingertip and dividing the lens piece, grasping the third quadrant and then crushing it between the chopper and the fingertip and emulsifying the lens pieces. Doing the same thing for the fourth quadrant, grabbing it with a little bit of vacuum, holding it, crushing it between the chopper and the fingertip, and then emulsifying the lens pieces. Grasping the anterior portion of the epinucleus, and it starts to tumble out quite nicely. Holding the chopper deep in the bag as I do this to protect the bag. Take the chopper out, push BSS in, take the phaco tip out, and go in with the INA handpiece. Starting sub incisionally, I'm removing the sub incisional cortical material, sweeping side to side, grasping the anterior portion of the cortical material and peeling it from anterior to posterior. Switching to polish mode, polishing underneath the rexus edge of any lens epithelial cells. Once I'm done, I'm using a BSS cannula to pulse into the subincisional capsule or fornix. It was quite clean there. And then I'm going to fill the capsular bag with cohesive viscoelastic. And then using the sweep to polish underneath the rexus edge. Polishing on the left side and then now on the right side. Injecting the single piece acrylic intraocular lens into the capsular bag, making sure the leading edge is within the bag. Going in quickly with the INA handpiece, activating irrigation, making sure both haptics are disengaged off the optic, going underneath the optic, tilting it and rotating it 90 degrees clockwise, and removing all the viscoelastic from within the bag and any lens material adherent to the underside of the lens. Polishing underneath the rexus edge. And then here I'm just making sure that I understand where the axis is going to be and it's going to be at about 81 degrees. So I'm able to manipulate the lens using the INA handpiece. It's at about 90 now, so I have to rotate it just a little bit more clockwise, about 10 degrees clockwise. I'm doing this two-handed technique where I have the INA keeping the bag inflated and then rotating it under irrigation and then using the axis ring in the other hand to confirm the position. Once I'm satisfied that the position is correct, I'm pushing BSS with the cannula through the left hand, pushing BSS as I withdraw the INA handpiece. This helps me to kind of maintain some chamber stability which will hopefully lock in the position of the lens. I start to hydrate my incisions. And once the pressure is physiologic, I go ahead and measure once again. And as you can see here very clearly, that I have the lens at about 81 degrees. So in this case, I was able to manipulate the lens purely with the INA handpiece and then using the other hand 
placing the axis ring in such a way to very easily confirm position. Once I've achieved the correct position, I push BSS with the left hand, withdrawing the INA handpiece out and quickly filling the eye up with BSS and then hydrating the incisions. And this helps me to lock the position of the lens. So I hope this was helpful to you and I thank you for your attention.